In the last lecture, we learned about how we can save the current score that our user gets within the application and then load it up any time, for example, within our high score section on our start view. Now we're going to be expanding on this and moving a few more steps forward and integrating the ability to only display and only save the highest score in the game. So if the highest or the score is simply higher than the current highest score, save that and then load that up. Else, if the current score is not higher than the saved highest score, then don't save it. Now, in the last lecture, I did mention that all the coding that we were going to be performing wasn't going to be permanent and we were going to be drastically changing what we already added in, which is exactly what we're going to do right now. So how this works then is we're going to set up a kind of simple if statement for if the score is currently higher than the saved value, then save this new score and load this when needed. Else, if the current score is not higher than the kind of record that we saved, don't save the score and continue to previously load our previously saved one. So again, sounds a little bit confusing, but we'll break this down into very simple and easy steps. So we currently, within our view here, have been saving the information for our key, which was called key. So we've got it set up in our view controller dot swift and within our game view controller uh, dot swift here. So we're going to complete, completely change the file we're now saving it to and we're going to first start within our view controller dot swift. So as soon as the view loads up, what this does is at the moment is just displaying that saved score within our application. Now what I'm going to do is completely change the key and it's called this key record. So we're now working with a completely different file within our application. So if I go to build and run now, what you're going to see is there's nothing in this new key to display within our app. So pretty much look just like the first time we built and run our um, kind of last application when the key was actually called key, there's nothing to be displayed within it, which is perfect. That's a great start for us. So we're using this blank key. And again, when we do play the game, we're going to have information saved in it, so that's not a problem. What that does then is displays it within our label too. We're going to completely get rid of that. So as soon as the application loads up, we're going to get this information ready and the value let here, variable, is now holding that information within our record. So we need to basically create an if statement for the first time our user plays the game. So what we do is type in if and we do two brackets and inside if our value up above is equal equal to nil and we're going to create our parentheses and press enter so basically what they're saying is if there is nothing in that value which at the moment there currently is nothing we're going to get our label to dot text to simply equal the string of zero so again, as you can see now, there was nothing being displayed in it, which is not good for us because that just simply displays a blank gap. So if I go to build and run now, now again, this method here only kind of covers the first time our user plays the game. So as it loads up now, because the value equals nothing, we're going to tell the label anyway to display the number zero. Perfect. But what happens if it currently is? got content in. So maybe the user has played the game. Now there's information stored within the record key. So what happens then? Well, after the if statement, if it equals nil, do this else. Now else means for us is if the value does not equal nil, meaning if it has information stored within it. And then what that's simply going to do is get our label to dot text to simply equal our value as simple as that so we kind of readjusted how it now performs it all works off an if statement but again this what we just created now is only for when it loads up the high score i mean it's still going to display now as i build and run as you're going to see it still displays zero because there's no information being stored within it just yet there we go so now let's take a look in our game view controller dot swift so we've kind of fixed and sorted out how we load the high score but we haven't told it or kind of worked out how we save this high score 
So the first thing we need to do then is once it switches to this new view, we need to make sure that we have some form of variable holding the current record within the game. So we're going to scroll all the way to the top now where we got all of our variables that we created. I'm going to create one more variable and we simply type in VAR for short and I simply call it record data. And that's going to be linked to a simple string and then we place down our exclamation mark for the optional wrap for when we convert the data over. Then within the view did load section here, as soon as the view loads up, we're going to get this uh, string to display again the current saved information. So we're basically loading up what we've done again within the view will appear of our home view. So we type in let, and I'll type in user default, and we're going to simply have this equal our foundation dot user default dot standard then we do our let and we create a uh, value just like we've done before i'm going to have this equal our user defaults we created just up above dot string for key and the key we're equaling again is the new one that we've got which is record and then we're going to have our record data variable we just created up above uh, to then simply equal that current value. So that current variable we created of record data now equals the current saved data to the record key as soon as the view loads up. Now you may be thinking, why have you done that? Why have you made this variable equal it? Well, this really does now help us out for when we come to save it. So we can say if the score is currently higher than the record data value, because that's now housing again the high score, then save the data. So let's scroll down then to where we do have the ability to save the data once the game ends, which is just here. And again, we need to adjust how this also works. So the first thing we need to do then is create an if statement. So I'll space it out just up above. And again, we're going to be adjusting all this here. So we do this a little bit differently to how we did on the home screen. Whereas the home screen kind of almost preloaded the data, then decided what to do with it, we need to work back on ourselves when it comes to saving. We first need to find out if we do have the ability to save it first. For example, if our record data is equal equal to the value of nil, now again, this kind of um, helps us for the first time our user plays the game. If it's the first time our user plays the game, then what we want is to get this save function here. I'll simply copy it and paste it in. If it's the first time our user plays the game, no matter what score they get, it's always going to save it. And again, it's going to save it to our key, our record. So we now we can get rid of this one. There we go. So it's the first time they play the game because the record equals nil, then save that data. Now, what if it's not the first time our users played the game? What if it's the second time and they already have a high score? So that would mean that this if statement will become void unless we create an else. So else would mean if there is information stored within the record data, meaning our user has played the game before. So if they played the game for them, we then need to find out if the current score they've got is higher than the record because if it is then we save the score if it's not then we don't save the score it's as simple as that so we need to create some form of, of way of checking this out so before we do then we need to create two lets or two constants one's going to be for the score which is going to equal a int let me do a question mark there for the wrap which is going to equal our int because we need to convert over the label because the label is currently being displayed in a string format. So we got our score label dot text with our exclamation mark and that with a bracket. So what we've done there is we've taken this string, converted it into an int to be stored within this score constant. And I'll do the same again now, but this time it's going to be for our record. So uh, basically perform the same actions that we've just done. But the only difference is this record is going to be converted into an int from 
our record data again because that's also displaying it in a string format now we've got both of these two constants now storing these both of these information the current score and currently the record score so we need to create an if statement underneath so if our score exclamation mark is greater than our record exclamation mark and then perform the action between these two brackets and what that action simply is is saving the score so I can simply copy and paste it in now if it doesn't basically if the score is not higher than the record so if it doesn't you know, be higher than the record if it's lower then we don't have an else so we can't do anything meaning it won't save the score it won't do anything and that's exactly what we want so this covers a lot of aspects it covers the first time my user plays the game if it does whatever score they get is going to save anyway then the second time they come to play it because it's already saved the first time it means in the record there is a score so it completely bypasses this first one and then starts to read the else statement the else statement basically gets a score and a record of both again the score holds the current score the record holds the saved data if the score is higher than the record then completely save all that data else if it's not there's nothing for it to do meaning it won't do anything in other words it won't save the score and that's exactly what we want and that is how again we check if the if it's a new high score and how we save it so then when it returns back to the uh, first view our home view where it's going to be displaying our high score again in the view did load here if the value equals nil meaning if there is no saved data it won't display anything it simply displays zero but if there is saved data it'll display that record in the label now the record is always going to be holding the highest score our user has ever got so that's all we need to do is just display that information inside of our label on our home view so let's go to build and run then let's go to build and run let's test it out we're going to test it out in multiple ways now so what we're going to do then we'll just wait for it to load up we're going to first test it out by simply getting a score you can see we don't have a score at the moment so it displays zero we start the game and we're going to get a fairly easy score so the score is then beatable the next time we play so let's go for example six and we just wait for the game to end now so once it's finished completely ends I then go to restart and it displays the number six if I go to them play the game again and let's this time let's get a score higher than six so let's go for ten now what this is gonna do is gonna find out that this yes is higher than our previous high score and then simply save that in its place so when I restart it displays ten now how do we know that this is actually working because previously it was just saving any score we had so you could quite frankly say that this is doing the same thing well how we do know it works is if this time we get a score which is a lot lower let's go for seven than the current high score which is set at ten where this time it won't save this high score so when it finishes and we restart it still says that our high score is 10 I can then stop the application from running and then go to build and run again and it will still say that our high score is 10 and the only way we can make that change is if our user beats that score so again we build and run press it as many times as we want and let's go up to 15 this time so then once the game ends that will save as our new high score there we go and if I played again and didn't quite beat the high score then you know let's go for let's go let's say we was at 12 you're gonna know now that it won't save an update so it only well first it checks if it has beaten a high score then only saves if it has how cool is that we now have the ability to save the users high score so they can it's basically giving the application some form of replayable value so they'll try and play it over again see if they can you know share to their friends and family see if they can beat their high scores and ultimately see who has the fastest reactions